it seems so obvious, but it, it shocked me when I started saying this that people hadn't thought of it that way. But if you if you come to if you come to Finger Lakes Community College, I can show you four classes side by side. And they are as follows. The HBAC program, which I guess that's like duck work and things, HVAC. Uh, the music recording technology program. The nursing program, and what I'm calling our natural sciences program, or AS Science program. Right? In the music recording technology program, if you walked in there right now, there's students in a real studio, there's real musicians behind the glass, and they're actually recording music. The HVAC students are building duct work and doing instrumentation, and the nursing students are in a nursing lab that looks exactly like a hospital. You walk in, you swear you're in a hospital. And there's beds, and there's a nursing station. They're actually doing that. You walk into General Bio, where our bio majors are sitting right now, and you'll see what I'm doing to you right now. This is the absolute worst thing I should be doing to you to teach you about curry. Put you in a room, looking at a two-dimensional uh, structure here, with my talking head, blah, 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 you guys all staring at me, right? This is, this is, this. so if we are okay, right, with doing that for our science students, then that's a problem. Can you imagine if I proposed that for a music recording technology that we certify those students in that degree program by putting them in a room like this and having me go through PowerPoint slides on what a music recording studio looks like and go with a laser pointer, when you want to turn up the treble, push that button, right? Or even worse, with nursing. Can you imagine sending them out to court? Learning nursing from PowerPoint lectures, right? So, we would not be okay with any of those other degree programs if we took away the experiential part of it for their training. But yet we allow students to walk in our front door saying, I want to be a biology major. They tell us that. And we're, we follow them to a classroom where they sit in a chair for 15 weeks and stare at PowerPoint slides. And we're okay with that. We, I, I can't imagine how that's even possible, right? So I, I just said that to my administrators, and they're like, you know, I never really thought of it that way. It's because we don't think of it, right? People aren't, that message is not getting out, that it's not okay. That if, if you are, if we are training scientists, then they need, they, they don't need to. They have to be practicing the craft. They have to be. Otherwise, we're not doing our job. So if I, if, if I have faculty that don't want to do it because they're like, oh, it's too hard, I say, you're so concerned about your teaching, you really are a good instructor. But yet you stop to think about what you're doing when you think about training students for science. You, if you really stop and think about it, you, you have to be doing undergraduate research. You just have to. And so it has to become a priority for our administrators. It has to become a priority for us. And it has to be a, a team effort. It can't be one person going, I'm just going to do it. Yay! Right? Because if you go away, your research goes away. If, you're, if your institution is doing undergraduate research and you say, well, it's really just me, but it's really good, right? And you're doing it on your own time and you're not being paid and rewarded for it, well, guess what? When you go away, who's going to walk in and go, that looks like a great idea, I'll do that, right? From the outside, it looks like you're crazy. From the outside today, when I looked at what you guys what you do with your chemistry uh, students, Roz, I was like, 5.30 in the morning until 8 at night on a Saturday? So ridiculous. I'm like, who would sign up for that, right? So anyway, so I always like to finish with that because I, I'd like you to walk past your science class. Or think about your own class. If you're teaching biology or chemistry and you're teaching it in a way that doesn't teach the craft and you have students in that room that say, I want to be a scientist, right? Think about nursing and record, music recording. It, it, just have, it just has to change. And so what do we do? We help. What, what we do is we say, all right, all the stuff that you need, you saw the Ball State example, we'll help you with that, with models, with faculty development, with outlets for students to present posters, with places for you to network, right, for you to collaborate with your projects. That's our job, right? That's what Curry does. That's our mission. It's our vision. It's what we do. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.
research projects with my students, but it's just me. Um, I have a question, which is, do you know if anybody in the social sciences takes this similar approach? Because most of my research experience has been in social science, and that's a very nice um, companion to statistics, teaching statistics. And if not, if you've never heard of anyone like that, what would you recommend if there was an interest in that? Okay, so, yeah, that's a good question. Um, and people ask us, do we have social scientists in our network? And I should start off by saying Curry started out almost entirely in the biological sciences because that was my background, but has moved into environmental science, chemistry, uh, we have one physics group, we have an engineering group, uh, and we have one or two institutions that have um, social science programs. I am just not a social scientist. That When they talk to me about their research, it sounds very different in my biology brain than what I would consider research, um, but I listen to them. And as it turns out, the models work perfectly well for them, so in terms of the, the, the change in the curriculum. Hi, I am Amrita Barabush from Baltimore City Community College. It's absolutely a wonder to hear you today. Um, I remember that one year ago I was sitting in my office and all alone is reading the paper that your um, brand was approved. Uh, you know, and just I seeing it in action is like actually like seeing your words come true. You know, action is like, so much more powerful than um, so it was, it was an absolute pleasure to hear you today. I just wanted to ask like if I am one of few faculty doing research. How, I mean, in, in your scenario, how did, did other faculty get motivated to get into music, music and I mean, how, how did all that happen? Right, so, so two, two parts of that. The, the, the general question has to do with how do you get other faculty involved. If you're a one-person show, uh, which I was at the time, I, 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 I had to do two different things. Um, if, I, if I approached somebody and gave them the message and they responded negatively to that, I stopped asking. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want to spend energy trying to convince somebody that this is the important thing to do if they're not willing to hear the message because I think the message is perfectly clear. So I stop asking. But the second piece, which is now coming around, which is even better, is through evaluation and assessment. Everybody I know has got that on their minds all the time. In New York, we're getting it really heavy. When we're looking at learning outcomes and, and impact on what we do with students, the data is so clear that that putting these students through these experiences has wonderful benefits for many of our outcomes. That the administrators look at that and go, okay, you guys are all gonna be doing this now, right? So there's that, if it works type of thing, then that's what we're gonna do as an institution now. So they don't have a choice, right? That's, that's the thing. They can continue to do what doesn't work and get poor student learning outcomes and poor because of students. But the administration not let that go on right now. So, I, my philosophy is to use evaluation and assessment data to, to get the top down driver in our partners. That's what I, I tell them. We, can, we, we can't be constantly chasing after people and hoping that they'll get involved. But it's important that, that they do, right? It needs to be an institutional effort. You saw how it's grown in Finger Lakes, that, that list of projects. That's three different departments and about 13 different faculty that are now all involved. Um, I'm from the Community College of Auburn County, and we have um, isolated faculty that are doing undergrad research, and, and um, we keep thinking of ways of getting money. And so I was just wondering, have you do you know of anyone in your network that has ever tapped into Perkins funding to support undergrad research? I don't. And I don't know enough about Perkins to know why or why not. But but well, I should say that instrumentation. And equipment. I know people have got their targets, but they use it for other, for other people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Three, one more question. Hi, my name is Antonio Castillo from 
rock build up with Montgomery College. Um, you've been mentioning about the, how important it is to assess the successful of um, undergraduate research program. Can you um, develop on that? What type of tool do you use to, to assess the success? Thank you. So in terms of assessment, we do, we do a couple things. We look at um, sort of hard impacts, which is time to graduation, uh, persistence from semester one to semester two. So this is all institutional data that we use to look at, you know, as, as an undergraduate research as a classroom intervention, does it have effects on those numbers? We also look at some, uh, we're, we're looking at some important outcomes like impacts on critical thinking. So things that students will need to improve on if they want to become better scientists. Now the instruments that we use, the instrument that we use is an instrument called the CAT test. If you've ever heard of this, critical thinking assessment test, it's out of Tennessee Tech. Um, it's very difficult to find a validated instrument to measure skills, research skills in students. You can create your own, but again, it's the, it's the validated piece that's difficult. So we're sort of stuck with using tools that are already out there, like David Lopato's surveys we use. If you've not heard of those, because they've just been around forever. People think the community accepts that it's a validated instrument. But that's still self-reported student data. Right? They're still saying, I liked it and I did this. 